Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about long run adjustments in the ASAD model. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. Now you should already be pretty well aware of the ASAD model. If you aren't well versed on that yet, make sure you go back and watch the ASAD model video. Now in this video we are talking about the difference between the long run and the short run. And you may have learned about the difference between long run and short run back in micro, but we have a different definition here. For macroeconomics, in the short run, wages and other resource prices are what are called sticky. That means that wages and other resource prices don't change because of a change in the price level. So if we have a 20% inflation rate, that means that in the short run, wages and other resource prices will be unchanged. But in macroeconomics, when we talk about the long run, it means that wages and other prices are flexible and they will actually adjust to changes in the price level. So if we still have that 20% inflation rate, in the long run, wages and other resource prices will increase by 20% because they will adjust to the new price level. So we aren't talking about a specific amount of time. We're talking about what has changed. In the short run, wages and other resource prices are sticky and inflexible, but in the long run, wages and other resource prices are flexible and they adjust to the price level. So as you already know, when you graph out the short run aggregate supply curve, we get an upward sloping curve that shows the direct relationship between the price level and the amount of real GDP output. And the reason we see that relationship is because wages and other resource prices are flexible in the short run. But in the long run, because wages and other resource prices are flexible, we get a vertical long run aggregate supply curve. Now remember we went into more detail on this in the aggregate supply video, so I won't rehash that here. And that means that in the long run, the economy will produce the full employment level of output. As you should already be aware, we can graph out short run equilibrium by having the current equilibrium point being to the left of the long run aggregate supply curve. When you graph out the ASAD model like this, that also tells us that the unemployment rate is going to be greater than the natural rate. This is a recessionary gap and short run equilibrium. If we wanna graph out a short run equilibrium with an inflationary gap, we have our current level of real GDP output right there and the long run aggregate supply curve is going to be to the left of the current level of output. When you graph it out like this, that means that our current level of output is greater than our potential real GDP output. That's the amount we can produce in the long run. And that means that the unemployment rate will be less than the natural rate of unemployment. But in the long run, we will get neither of these. In the long run, all three curves are going to intersect like that. And that means that the current level of output equals the long run potential output. So YE equals YF on the graph there. And that occurs when the current unemployment rate equals the natural rate of unemployment. So next we're going to talk about how it is that we can move from the short run equilibrium to the long run equilibrium. Let's go ahead and put up a recessionary gap on our ASAD model. And in the short run, wages and other resource prices will be sticky. And that will mean we will stay in the short run equilibrium for that time. But when we have a recessionary gap, that means we have a large number of unemployed workers. Eventually, those workers will accept lower wages to find jobs. And when those wages fall, that means lower input costs for businesses. Lower input costs cause a short run aggregate supply curve shift to the right. And when we have that shift to the right, that's going to lower our price level and bring our quantity of output to the full employment level of output, closing our recessionary gap. So in the short run, we will be at YE, but in the long run, Y2 will equal YF. And the unemployment rate will once again equal the natural rate. Let's do this again, this time with an inflationary gap. Let's put up our inflationary gap on the ASAD model. And when YE is greater than YF, it means workers are being overworked. The economy is producing more than its long run potential in the short run. Eventually, workers are going to demand higher wages. And when that occurs, those higher wages will mean higher input costs for businesses. Those higher input costs will mean a leftward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve. And that of course raises the price level, but brings us back to the full employment level of output at Y2 there. And so that inflationary gap will be eliminated in the long run 
through an increase in wages and other resource prices. Make sure you remember the changes in wages caused this shift of the short run aggregate supply curve for your explain points on your AP macroeconomics exams. Next, we're going to talk about how we can move from the long run equilibrium to a short run equilibrium and back to a long run equilibrium. Let's put up our ASAD model here and we are starting at a long run equilibrium scenario here. The current level of output labeled YE equals our full employment level of output labeled YF. If we see an increase in consumer confidence, which would cause a rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve, that would put us at an inflationary gap. It would cause the price level to rise and real output to also increase. This rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve has caused demand pull inflation and created an inflationary gap. Now to close that inflationary gap in the long run, workers are going to demand higher wages. So that means wages and other resource prices will increase. That means higher input costs for businesses shifting our short run aggregate supply curve to the left, raising our price level further, but bringing us back to the full employment level of output. So the moral of this story is the long run impact of a rightward shift of aggregate demand is an increase in the price level, but no change in real GDP output. The increase in output only happens in the short run. If on the other hand, we had a negative supply shock to the economy, perhaps from an increase in oil prices, that's going to cause a leftward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve. Price level will temporarily rise and the real GDP output will temporarily decrease. The economy is now experiencing cost push inflation or stagflation because we have higher price levels with higher unemployment. Those unemployed workers will eventually accept lower wages. That will mean lower input costs for businesses. And then the short run aggregate supply curve will shift to the right, bringing us back to the full employment level of output. In the end, a leftward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve will cause no change in real GDP or the price level in the long run. Now these long run changes in the short run aggregate supply curve shifting to the right or to the left because of a change in resource prices, these are self adjustment changes. Later on, you're going to learn about fiscal policy and monetary policy to find out how the Federal Reserve and the government can help us close these inflationary and recessionary gaps. But what we're talking about here is when the government takes no discretionary action, the economy fixes itself in the long run. Finally, we're going to talk about how economic growth changes in the long run. And while we'll go into more detail regarding economic growth in the future, for now you need to know that economic growth is not an increase in real GDP. Economic growth is an increase in potential real GDP. As you should already be aware that increases in the quantity or quality of workers as well as productivity increases or technology increases will all cause economic growth. And we see that as a rightward shift of the long run aggregate supply curve in this model. If we bring the short run aggregate supply curve and the aggregate demand curve together on this graph, we can still see economic growth as a rightward shift of that long run aggregate supply curve. And when we see that rightward shift of the long run aggregate supply curve, we will eventually see a rightward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve as well. Now on the AP macroeconomics exam, economic growth is usually only talked about in regards to the long run aggregate supply curve shifter, but you should be aware that when the long run aggregate supply curve shifts to the right, the short run aggregate supply curve is also going to shift to the right in the long run. And there you have it. That is everything you need to know about long run self adjustment of the economy. If you still need more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.